Before I show you how to put the colour mixer together, let's take a look at some of the built-in objects and their methods that we're going to need to do it. I've started a Windows Forms application here, and I'm just going to make the form a little bit bigger so I've got more room to draw on. I'm going to pop a button on there to launch my code. The first thing I'm going to need is a graphics object, so let's declare a variable of type graphics. Now I'm going to create an instance of the graphics class, and this might seem a little unusual, but bear with me. Me is the form. Me is the container for all of the shapes and lines that I'm going to draw. I'm also going to need a pen. And I'll create an instance of that pen object like this. It needs at least one parameter, a brush. Let's go with magenta. And I can also specify the width of the line. Let's go with two. So those are my drawing tools, now let's draw a line. I need to pass the draw line method a pen and some coordinates. The coordinates of the starting position and the coordinates of the ending position. Now there are actually a number of ways I could do this. I could define a couple of points first. I'll say more about points later. But let's see what this does. There's my magenta line. By the way, these coordinates are from the top left of the form. So if this is the X and Y coordinate of the start of the line, if I make them both zero, run it again, you can see the line begins right in the top left corner of the form. Now let me explain this a little bit. I'm gonna put a picture box on the form. A container. There's my picture box. It's called picture box one. And instead of saying g equals me dot create graphics, I'm going to change that to g equals picture box one dot create graphics. Now remember, previously I drew a line which began in the top left corner of the form. See what happens this time. My line is starting in the top left corner of the picture box. Needless to say then, this gives me a bit more control over where I draw things on the form. Let's go back to me for now. So far I've created a pen and I'm maintaining a reference to that pen called P. Let me just show you, I can create a pen on the fly. If you're used to the style of object-oriented programming, this won't be terribly new to you. Of course, this is a one-off pen just for this command. I'm not maintaining a reference to my blue pen, but let's take a look and see if it works. So I now have a vertical blue line. Let's draw some other shapes. You can see I've got quite a lot to choose from. You can see the draw rectangle command, or at least this version of it, takes a number of parameters, a pen, the starting coordinates of the rectangle, that's the position of the top left corner of the rectangle, and then a width and a height. Let's draw an ellipse. As with the rectangle, the coordinates of the top left corner. We have to imagine the ellipse is inside a rectangle. And a width and a height. If I want to draw a perfect circle, well, that's just a type of ellipse. I make the width and the height the same. I can also draw an ellipse or a circle using a rectangle to define its size and its position. This time I'm maintaining a reference to the rectangle object. And I'm going to pass the draw ellipse method a pen and a rectangle. Interestingly, I'm only seeing half of this new ellipse. 
because there's a picture box sitting on top of the form. Let's get rid of it. That's better. Now I'm going to fill a rectangle with a solid colour using a brush. And you can see we've got quite a few fill methods here. And there's my solid rectangle. I should point out that this drawing space is purely two-dimensional. It's not as if my other objects are sitting behind it. I've literally overwritten them. In fact, if you want to erase something from the form, you basically need to draw over the top of it using the same colour as the form. Now, when you use brushes like this, you're limited to a set of colours. The ones you can see on the list here. If you want something a little bit more customised, you can create your own solid brush. And this time, instead of selecting a colour, I'm going to use the from ARGB method. What this lets me do is specify the amounts of red, green and blue that I want to use in this colour. 100 red, the maximum 255 green, and 200 blue. This time, a sort of a, a minty green rectangle. Now I'm going to draw three ellipses using rectangles to define their size and position. This is getting us closer to what we're trying to achieve. A bit of copying and pasting to speed things up. And let's comment this code out now as well. We don't need this anymore. But I still need my graphics object and my pen. Let's take a look. It's starting to look a bit more like the application we're striving for. Let's fill these three ellipses with colour. Instead of draw ellipse, I'm going to use fill ellipse. And we'll give it a brush instead of a pen. It's starting to look a little bit more like my colour mixer application, but I need to somehow colour in the intersections between those circles differently. Let's see how we might do this. I'm just going to experiment with rectangles first of all. Let's take these two lines and comment the rest of this out for now. Fill the rectangles. And now I'm going to use the intersection method of a rectangle to get the intersection of rectangle 1 with rectangle 2 and store the result back into rectangle 1. As I said, rectangle 1 now contains the intersection between the two rectangles. So I'm going to fill rectangle 1 with a different colour. Let's take a look. We're creating the illusion of overlapping rectangles. We're on the way. Can we do something similar with circles? Before we do, let's put the intersection of the two rectangles into another object called a region. And now, instead of using fill rectangle, I'll use fill region. Same effect, but this is necessary to move things on. Unfortunately, the ellipse object doesn't have an intersect method, so I need to approach this in a slightly different way. But what we've learned here will be useful. 